actually an agricultural building off of a farm on the north side of Duncan where a Walmart and mall complex is built. And we led this little activism campaign to stop Walmart and save the farm. And we got a call from their lawyers. And they said, you know who we are. We know who you are. Don't do this. Stop it. We're like, right, okay, that's true. That's silly. We really, it's kind of like, ping. And so they said to us, um, you're not going to stop the development process, but you could actually, you're not going to protect the land, but you could protect the farm buildings on the land, which is an amusing way of saying, you could actually do our demolition work for us for free. <laughs> <laughs> said, okay, we can get the building. Star, are we going until 1230? Yeah. Uh, did. We went and power sawed down the corners of the buildings. We threw it on a flat deck. We shipped it over here. Um, and then we worked with a local building school at a college to put the walls back up and to actually build the building as you see it now. It's called Taj 2 Lodge because this is Taj 1. It's our beautiful little woodworking shop. Mm -hmm. And in the old days, we had this uh, like 70 something year old Brett who ran it like impeccably clean, tidy shop. And he always wanted a storage area for the shop. And the building team said, well, maybe we'll build a lean-to off the shop. And then they came up with this next proposal to build a pole barn. And then we got this building donated and we stood it up. And this is going to be the sorting area for all our salvage. So if you walk in there, all of our plumbing, our electrical, it's all labeled, sorted, inventoried, yada, yada. And uh, we were like, well, come on, we've gone from a shop. This used to be a rat infested chicken shed when we got here. And we took all the coops <laughs> off of it. And then once it started getting leaded glass windows with brass door latches, we called it the Tajma bleep bleep hall. Because it was actually getting all the resources. And we didn't really have an office, but we had the Taj Mahal shop. And then they had all of a sudden the bigger next building and all the little, you know, people trying to do other things like cook in a substandard conditions, nowhere to sleep. But the shop was more beautiful than anything. We we're like, great, now we got Taj 2. And not only that, if you sit all winter and look at the building, you realize not only do we need a storage space, we really need an indoor classroom space to gather and to learn in. And then if you looked at it, it's always better to go up than out but we decided, well, just add on another kind of 500 square feet and then go up <laughs> and put on the timber frame and up we went. So the upstairs is actually all the wood on the cladding there, all the board and batten wood on the top and the post and beam, the timber frame all comes from another project you're going to see a lot of on the site. We managed to rescue 15 logging trucks full of windfalls off the clear cuts. The blowdowns at the edge of the clear cuts and they fall in. And <clears throat> people are up there always cutting them up for firewood. And so we called main office of Island Timberland and said, Oh my god, people are cutting up millable timber up there, you don't know what's going on. And they said, Yes, we do. They're actually cutting it up for firewood and we let people go in and do permits and stuff. We're like, oh god, it's all beautiful timber. Anyway, we ended up with 13 logging trucks in the first run, a beautiful millable timber. So in those kind of situations, the, the corporation can get a charitable tax receipt in exchange for value from our nonprofit society. The school gets this valuable learning materials and or can make projects and affordable housing and gathering spaces and the wood gets to live on with one more life. It's not standing timber anymore, but it was going into a completely different process. This at least honors it in a different way. And oftentimes you don't even know what's underneath the board and batten on a lot of these almost conventional looking buildings, but that's a light straw clay building up there, as I said, a la Robert Laporte. Um, and we built the whole upstairs to this in six days, the walls. So natural building's not always slow, not when Robert Laborte's around. Mm. But everything on this building is either salvaged or um, demoed materials, except for things like roofs and sometimes chimneys and sometimes wiring. But other than that, you can almost create something out of nothing or repurpose it, as we all love to say now. Van City is a uh, local credit union, it's one of our major sponsors, they're a BC credit union. 
they did a project with us called Redefining Value. And, and they were trying to work on a global business plan for here and run the math and the pro formas on how do you create a village. And they're like, oh, people. Blah, blah, blah. And they're really awesome. One of their lead social enterprise kind of social project um, people came over and did an analysis with us. And at the end of an entire day on site, working stuff through and looking at how do you create stuff through as educational processes and all this salvage and demolition stuff and how can this place be built out of almost nothing? And I, I don't mean nothing in terms of effort, but I mean what they most relate to and their, and their work is around money. And so we got back to this building and Liz said, like, for example, we noticed that, you know, you put this in the pro formas and you said you needed to build this and then you went and built it anyway and we didn't even lend you the money or do the mortgage or anything and you went and had and built the building and, you know, it, it's standing here. It wasn't even finished at the time, but um, the conversation was like, you said that you were going to do this for $300,000 and we knew you couldn't do it for that kind of money. So now it becomes a question of having to change all the pro formas and the spreadsheets and figure out what it really what it really should have said. And we're all looking at each other like, what's she talking about? Why does she keep saying $300,000? And then someone finally said, no, actually if you read it, it said we were gonna do it for 30,000. And she said, we know, we read that. We're over in a boardroom in Vancouver and we knew there was no way we were building 3,500 square feet for $30,000. And your projections, like this is the part 